Hey y'all, Jim here with Sunrise Farm. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about potatoes. I have three 50 pound bags of potatoes. I have a Yukon Gold, a Kennebec, and a red potato. And we're gonna go ahead and open these bags and we're gonna cut them up on the eyes to let them heal up, that's H-E-A-L, uh, just like you would an open wound on the body. Heal up the open skin when you cut the potatoes for where the eyes are so you can divide up and get more plants per potato. And uh, yeah, so come on in. Let's uh, sit a spell and talk potatoes. All right, so let's, um, let's start with these Yukon Gold right here first. Let's open them up. And these blue tags on all of my potatoes, I actually bought them from a local farm supply store and they are all certified seed potatoes from Maine. So let's go ahead and open up the first one. Oh, there we go, look at there. Look at that beautiful sprout already on that Yukon Gold potato, isn't that nice? Now, I actually got these potatoes two weeks ago, and I've let them sit inside my uh, shop, which has an interior office, which is, uh, I leave the lights on for most of the time, and then it's got a heater in there. So one of the ways to help sprout potatoes, sometimes it's referred to as chit, which is more of a European term, kind of in the UK to use it, but this is sprouting the potato. And so the, a potato normally has several eyes that'll sprout. In fact, it looks like a little one right there. But um, you can cut the potatoes, but to get the potatoes to sprout more, you basically want to give them some light, more often times than not, probably an artificial style light like indoor lighting. And you want it to be relatively warm. You know, when you store a potato, you want it to be in a cool, dark place to try to prevent it from doing that. If you've ever bought a bag of potatoes or left them sit on your counter for a while or in your maybe in your pantry or something, you'll know that they start growing their own eyes. Doesn't mean anything per se, you can just pop them off and go ahead and eat them. But, so this is what we got. Oh, look at there, all right, this is even a better example. Now, this one already has three sprouting on it. That's outstanding. So technically speaking, we can cut this potato into three parts. We can go right between there, and we can go right between there. And we're gonna do that in a minute. All right, let's go and open up another bag. This bag is red Pontiac. So the red Pontiac potatoes, let's go ahead and get it open. Oh man, are these looking fabulous, huh? Look at all of those sprouts on that thing. There's one, two, three, four. Technically there's five sprouts on that thing. Now I'm probably only something like that. It's relatively small. I'll probably cut it in two, maybe three sections. But isn't that beautiful to see? And like I said, you're watching me open them, so I haven't even opened them before now. Now looky there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six sprouts on that one potato. Awesome. All right, let's move on and let's cut, let's open up the bag on the uh, Kennebex. If I can grab a hold of it, I will anyway. Burlap sack doesn't want to cooperate with me here. All right, let's see what we got. Now here's your Kennebec potato. And look at those beautiful green eyes, green sprouts on those things. There's a whole handful of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's at least seven sprouts on that potato. 
little baby one there. I guess you could call that eight. So we might cut that potato. We're gonna have to figure out, we're gonna have to diagnose the situation there and strategically cut that potato. Kennebecs quite often are used, one of the potatoes you can use for like a baked style potato because that's a pretty good sized potato right there. Um, russets are another one obviously that's used for baking, but Kennebecs can be used for baking. Kennebecs are a white potato. So basically I've gotten a red potato, a yellow potato, and a white potato. All right, well let's move over to the table and let's start cutting some of them up. All right, so let's get started cutting these potatoes up to get them to heal. Now, before we begin the process of cutting up, I am gonna have to ask y'all for a favor. This happens to be a cutting board from in the house with, in my wife's kitchen. This happens to be one of her uh, Pioneer Woman knives that I'm gonna cut the potatoes with. I'd appreciate it if y'all not bring that up. She, uh, she, well, she doesn't know I took them, okay? So let's keep that between you and I. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so um, the question sometimes comes up, do you need to cut a potato in order to plant it? No, you don't. Like this one has one eye on it currently growing. If I really wanted to, I could just stick the whole thing in the ground just like that. And that thing would grow if I stuck it in the ground. Problem is when you do something like that, in all sincerity, you're wasting a whole bunch of the potato. So if you can cut multiple eyes, points where the, they'll sprout and roots will grow, it's to your benefit to maximize your potato yield. Um, this one's probably not the greatest of example, but let's say one of these red Pontiac potatoes. There are so many eyes started on this thing. There is no reason not to cut it into at least two, if not more sections. Why? Because every time you cut it, as long as you leave one good eye, one or two, whatever you want to do, but as long as you leave one good eye with a reasonable amount of potato for its starting growth nutrients, there's no reason why you can't get multiple plants out of one potato. So every potato plant that you can grow should, in effect, yield you more potatoes in the end. So let's just start with this one right here. Sometimes it takes a minute if you got all these eyes, because like I said, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That actually looks like one there, so 10. It looks like there's 10 potential eyes on this potato. That means I could cut it apart at least three or four times if I did it strategically and can easily get three or four potato plants out of this producing more potatoes. But they're so close together and the smaller the potato, because red Pontiacs are a little small, but the smaller the potato, the harder it is to cut, a, you know, cut into too many sections. So let's just begin, see what we got. And if one of the eyes, when you're doing this, if, if one of the sprouts breaks off, don't worry about that, it'll come back. Um, you haven't damaged the potato at all if you happen to break one off. So let's start let's start there are two eyes here sprouts so I'm going to cut it right through here so that's one cut and those two eyes two sprouts right there there's actually a little third one growing right there so we'll, we'll set that aside a second and then we have this part of the potato there's one two three four five and a little one so basically six sprouts growing on this so if we can get strategic again let's just use there's one two decent sprouts one two decent sprouts so let's try to go right through here and we'll maybe just use three pieces on this potato okay so there you have a little piece of potato but it's got two sprouts on it 
and we're going to let this heal. Now you want to, when you cut the potatoes to heal, again, if you don't, if you're not going to cut them, you don't have to heal them, but that's what should stand to reason. But when you cut them, you want to cut them at least a week or so before you're going to plant them. Give them at least a week, three days, four days, but I would say at least a week to heal over because it'll create a, a film and it'll cover this moisture and protect the potato. Do you have to do it? Not necessarily, I've grown them without it, but healing them is, is the best option if you have the time and space to do all of this. So I have this kind of tray sitting beside me, you probably only see part of it in the shot, but I can simply line up all my potatoes in one of these and then I'll set them back in my shop. That way it, this particular, well, in fact, let me, uh, let me just pull this more into the shot. This is just an old bread tray. And as you can see, it's got holes in the bottom and it sits off of those bottom holes about a half inch with the outer rim. So it actually sits up off of those holes. So what that means is, even if I were to sit this on the concrete floor, A, the potatoes won't touch the concrete, they're only in that, in this plastic tote, and B, it's suspended off of the floor in the sense of airflow will move completely around it. So I use, I have a few of these, I use these uh, quite often for plants and certainly doing it this way with the potatoes. So going back to this piece, if I really wanted to be cute and clever with it, I could, with these two sprouts right here, you technically only need one sprout for a potato. So in theory, I could cut that right here and separate those two sprouts and plant those two pieces. Um, not sure I'm going to do that on this one. I think it might end up with the fact of how many I end up having after I cut them all up and then I .e. how much space I have. I can always go back and do a couple here and there if I want to. For right now, I'm just going to leave this one with the two eyes, but you certainly could cut it. And this piece that I had cut off, the same thing kind of applies. There's that one little bitty sprout right there and if it pops out I could easily cut this potato here I could also cut this potato right in here between those two uh, sprouts right there again I'm not necessarily going to do that uh, right this second let's just take another one of these red Pontiacs and then we'll move on to the other potatoes and, I, and I'll spare you from watching me cut 150 pounds of potatoes. <laughs> After I get them cut, we'll come back to that part. But um, so at any rate, there's uh, one, two, uh, no, that's not, one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like six sprouts on this thing. Four are pretty visible. And so let's strategically cut these. I'm going to go ahead and cut between these two, so I'm going to have this one and this one and cut between these two. All right, so there's a little piece right there with a sprout. Well, I'm going to do one sprout on that piece. Now this piece, There's a sprout, good sprout there, another good sprout there. I'm gonna go right in between that. Okay, so I've got one real good sprout there and in actuality a very tiny one right there. And then on this piece, these sprouts are pretty far apart so in theory, I could go ahead and cut this here in between these two sprouts. There's actually another little teeny tiny baby sprout right there. I may have cut it out when I made the first cut, but let me, let's go ahead and cut this one. And I'm gonna kind of cut at an angle to kind of keep as much potato for both sprouts as, you know, as I kind of can without getting too weird about it. All right, so there was that cut right there. And so now we can plant these two pieces and we should get 
two potato plants. So this is also how you can maximize your potato planting even if you only have a handful of potatoes, now it, did, it does depend a good bit on the variety. Obviously the Yukon Golds, they don't uh, typically have as many eyes to separate a lot of times as maybe the, something like the Red Pontiacs do. But depending on the variety, you can certainly maximize your potatoes by cutting the part, the, the sprouts, the eyes because that the the eyes are what comes what the sprouts grow out of so they're called eyes so wherever the sprouts are growing you can go ahead and cut apart again you only technically need one for a potato plant so try to maximize your potatoes as best you can now right now on this one this one's a Yukon gold and I don't see but the one, one eye, one, one eye sprouting. It looks like one right there may be getting ready to do it. So for right now, I don't see the necessity of cutting this potato apart. I hate to plant a whole potato like that, but unless I see more viable sprouts, I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm not gonna bother with that right now. This one on the other hand, this one has a little baby one right there. One, two, three, four. So this one can definitely be cut. Let's go ahead and start by cutting it right here. Okay. So I've cut this potato. You can see that one sprout right there. And that's going to be all on that particular piece. But you can see how why it's called a yellow potato because the inside is kind of yellow. These are red on the outside, so they're called red potatoes. And Kennebecs are white inside, so they're called, you know, white potatoes. But this, it's hard maybe to see with the, with the camera shot. But when you cut a potato, it's like water. It's all, you know, it's vastly water inside. So you have this shimmer, this shine. Well, that's just like skin on your body, like I'm saying. So you need to let it have a chance to heal over. Basically, when you cut a potato, you're creating a wound. Let it heal its wound. And so on this one, we've got that little baby one right there that's almost hard to tell. One, two, three. Let's go ahead and cut this apart and I'm going to kind of cut it this way, and I'm going to go in between these two sprouts, so where I'm going to have this little baby one and this one, and then these two. Okay, so there's the one sprout, and there's that little baby sprout there. And then clearly, there's two sprouts there, so that should be good. All right, looking at another Yukon Gold. See, I have another one that right now is only showing the one, one sprout. So this is another Yukon Gold that does, at the moment, is not worth me separating. I have one more Yukon Gold on the table. All right, so you can see there's, right there is a little baby one. And then there's one, two, three. This one I can definitely cut in half, if not in thirds. So let's see strategically what's the best way I can cut this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it where this baby one is. And this, I'm gonna cut it right in here. All right, so I've left that sprout there and that baby one there. And when you go to plant these, you want the sprouts facing up in the air because that's exactly where the, the stem's gonna grow for the leaves. So you want that facing up in the air as best you can. Now, here's one, th this leftover piece, I could probably cut right through there and make, make it two plants. In fact, I'm going to. Press 
carefully not wanting to cut myself. All right, so I just left one eye on that one, one sprout. Actually, that might be a little baby one right there. It's hard for me to tell at the moment. And then I left that sprout right there. You're probably asking yourself, man, is that enough potato to grow? It should be. You're only really getting it started growing because once it gets out of the ground, it's already going, it's like any other plant. It's going to start rooting into the ground. And once this comes out of the ground, it's going to start forming leaves. And with those leaves, it's gonna photosynthesize, drawing its energy from the sun. And of course the nutrients in the ground and it'll act as any other plant at that point. The only reason, it, you could almost look at the piece of potato left like a seed, little seed that you would plant. That little seed has everything it needs to get started, but doesn't have what it needs to grow and finish. Same thing right here. This has everything it needs to get started, but it will need the other nutrients, water, sunlight, in order to finish growing. All right, now let's move on to the Kennebec. All right, so this Kennebec has a little one there, little one there, 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 that's four, five, six, seven, eight, and that looks like a little one there, so probably nine. So let's see how we can strategically cut this. Now, can you see how a nice sized potato that is? That would absolutely be a good sized baked potato right there. And boy, I'm getting hungry as I'm doing this because I love <laughs> potatoes, especially baked potatoes. I'm one of those weirdos, and if you've never tried it, I'm going to encourage you to do so, but my wife calls me a weirdo anyway, and that is, I love, in fact, I might love eating the skins more than the actual potato with a baked potato, especially if there's been nicely buttered and perhaps wrapped in bacon, definitely a little uh, maybe salt and garlic on that thing or something, but eating the potato skin when it's cooked right, oof, boy, those are good stuff right there. I might have to save a couple of these and eat these tonight, let me tell you what. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Um, hmm. I am going to attempt to cut this at an angle like so. All right, so there are all kind of sprouts left on this piece. This big one that was already growing, a little one here, a little one here, a little one here, a little one there. But I'm not going to cut this piece anymore. I'm just going to leave it be. And so on this one, there's two pretty decent sprouts right there. That one's probably a sprout. And then there's another little baby sprout right there. At this moment, I'm not going to cut this potato anymore I might come back and cut it again after I after it has time to grow some more over the next week or so um, you can always go ahead and cut them again let them heal again or not and then plant them the only thing about healing is if you don't heal them when you plant them like I said I, I've done it it's fine but you're giving it more place to introduce disease if you don't let it heal first. So, all right, so on this one, there's one, two, three, four little eyes, five, six, seven little sprouts, and then these three decent ones at the end. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna basically cut this one like so. Let that be one. And right now, there's one, two, three, three baby ones left in this half, depending on how they grow out over the next week or so, because it's probably going to be, uh, today is, uh, well, it's mid-February, so I probably have maximum two weeks, let's, let's say seven to 14 days before I plant these. 
I'm trying to get the ground prepped right now. Um, my raised beds that y'all will be uh, seeing shortly because I'm going to try to plant these in the raised beds this year. We'll cut one more and then I'll move on to uh, showing y'all at the end of the process. All right, so this one has a little one. So that's one, another little one that's two, little one that's three, little one that's four, and then these ones that are growing at the end. So, it looks like if I cut it strategically this way, I can leave these and then have one, two decent ones on this half of the potato. So it just takes a minute to kind of map out what you want to do. All right, so on this one I have in my hand, there's one decent one there that's growing and another one there that's growing. And then on this little order piece I cut off, it has a little one there, a little one there, and these three little ones at the end. Now, in a lot of cases, when you go to plant these, because there's so many eyes on them, so many sprouts, you don't need to um, like stand them up or get all weird about them to try and make those sprouts grow upwards. You just need to remember that they grow up. And so this one, like I would just literally set it in the ground like that. This one, I just literally set it in the ground like that. It's like most other plants, it will find its way up to the sun, up to the surface. So, all right, well let me uh, get to cutting the rest of these and I'll be back with you shortly. So it's actually the next day after you saw me starting to cut a couple of each one of those potatoes, just to kind of show about how we can separate the eyes to grow more potatoes. I spent most of my evening last night watching TV and cutting uh, potatoes, so it's been kind of, uh, I'm almost getting sick of cutting potatoes to be honest with you. But we press on. Not everything in uh, farming is uh, enjoyable or uh, exciting, so. But watching things grow, that is exciting. So, it, it dawned on me after I already cut the other two, the red Pontiacs and the uh, Kennebex, that I never did count them first. For me, I'm not exactly that, I don't keep track of what, how many potatoes I have. I keep track of the amount of harvest poundage wise. In other words, I'm planting 50 pounds each of potatoes. I want to know what each one will yield at the end. And that's how I judge whether it's been good, bad, indifferent, what have you. But for the sake of this video, I hadn't done the Yukon Gold yet. So I thought that today I would lay them out here in my tractor for sake of the, the video and count how many potatoes I have, whole potatoes. And then we'll, I'll bring you back in after I've already cut them all up. And we'll talk about how many potato plants potentially we're going to um, seed and see how many will grow. So before you, including the two I cut yesterday, I have 111 Yukon Gold potatoes in that 50 pound bag. Now I can tell you um, on the red Pontiacs, I decided to count them after the fact. So I don't know how many potatoes I technically started with, but I do know that I had about 320 pieces that I cut up after the fact. Yep, you guessed it, that's a lot of planting. But I thought it would be interesting to you to know how many potential potato plants you can get when you have these kind of potatoes. Remember you can cut most of them in two, maybe even three, sometimes even four sections depending on the size of potatoes. These Yukon Gold, there's a few of them that maybe we can do that. So again, I have 111 Yukon Gold potatoes in that 50 pound bag and yeah I'll get back with you just as soon as I get all these cut up and get a count and we'll see how many we got then. By the way um, you know I have these bread trays I, I mentioned just a minute ago about putting uh, the cut potatoes in. I decided since those two other seed potatoes came in uh, burlap sacks and that means they're basically 
air throughout. I just decided to put all the potato, the cut potatoes back in that bag. They'll cure out just fine. The air moves around through that bag and through the potatoes. So they'll, they'll cure out just fine. So that's what I ended up doing. I put all the other Red Pontiac and Kennebex back in their perspective uh, burlap sacks. All right, I'll get back to you in just a second. So, as I just mentioned, we started with 111 Yukon Gold potatoes. After strategically cutting them up, seeing how many we could get out of it, we now have right at 200 even. So that's an obvious increase of 89 potential potato plants. Um, my raised beds that you'll be seeing real soon are going to be able to hold about 96 plants per bed. So for the Yukon Gold, that's going to be two of my raised beds that I can, that I'll plant these potatoes out in. Um, and that's pretty much how I'm quantifying how many I'm going to plant. All right, well, let me bring you in for a close-up shot of these potatoes real quick just to show you how they're all cut up and sitting here in my tractor bucket. And as you can see with all the open potatoes, you can actually almost see them starting to kind of sort of yellow out and heal over. I mean, the process begins pretty quick when an open potato hits the air. And so they'll just uh, continue to do that for a few days. All right, well, that'll wrap it up for this video with how to prep potatoes and set them up to get them to heal. I'm going to go ahead and throw all these back in the bread tray that I have and put these up in my shop for another week or so. Um, when I go to plant the potatoes, I'll clearly do a video on that for y'all. If you have any questions about anything I've done, any helpful comments, uh, whatever, whatever's on your heart or mind, please share it. Um, this is uh, not a one-size-fits-all, and this is certainly not about who knows everything and who doesn't. Um, this is an experience for us all to be able to grow together, literally, in knowledge and in food. And that's my prayer for you all, is that we can grow our own food, eat more healthy, be able to spend less money in the grocery store. That would be real nice. Uh, I'm sure you feel that same pain. It's, it's tough out there right now. So I appreciate y'all watching this video. Hopefully it was a blessing to you. If you'll take just a minute to like, subscribe, and share this video, and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we bring out a video, I'd much appreciate it if you found this video that interesting to you. So if there's uh, nothing else, I'll bid you adieu until the next time. Take care and God bless you. Have an amazing day in the Lord.